of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver! It was long after sundown when Dan Reed finished buying supplies at the Crossville General Store. He was busy putting them into saddlebags when a horseman reined up at the hitch rack beside him. Ho, 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 fella, ho. I'll find that double-crossing old coup to buy the Stand still, you crowbait you! If you stop digging that spur into his flank, maybe he would stand still. Yeah, uh, what the... <coughs> oh. <laughs> Mind your own business, kid. I am. But I don't like to see horses abused. Why, you cocky little... Get out of my way. There's plenty of room. I'm not in your way. Uh, where, uh... Where's the five-spot saloon? Right ahead of you, next to the general store. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now move out of my way, kid. I'm going in. I'm not trying to stop you, and I'm not in your way. Oh, one of them smart talking buttons, huh? Well, I'll show you what this I think of your... This is your fault, your... not mine. <laughs> uh, uh, tripped me. Why, you sneaking Sure, I tripped you. I did it in self-defense. You started the argument. And I ain't got the time to fool with you now. But if you ever cross me again, it'll be different. You savvy? Don't worry. I won't forget. Smart little... Yes, Mike Don't stand there with your jaw flapping. Give me a drink. Sure, sure. But I haven't seen you for two years, Mike. I thought you were but still... I'm still rotting away in territorial prison. Well, I ain't. I got out this morning. Now, where's that drink? Yeah. Here you are, Mike. Uh... <coughs> That's better. Now, it's a Saturday night, ain't it? Sure, but... Branch protect- Potter used to be here in the five spot every Saturday night. Where is he? Potter's back there playing poker, Mike. But you're no... All I want to know. I'm looking for a coyote named Potter. Branch Potter. Mike Ballard. I thought he was doing time. You must have let him out. He really steamed up the truck. Yeah. I said it's Branch Potter in here. Looking for me, Mike? I reckon I am. Are you drunk? Yeah. Not too drunk to know that you're the hombre who put me in territorial for two years. If telling the truth about your cattle rustling makes me responsible, yes, I put you in jail. You dirty... Why shouldn't I send you to jail? 
You started swinging a long loop on lazy-ass cattle, and I caught you at it. Now do the same thing again. Oh, no, you won't, Potter. Because you're not going to live that long. Gunning for me, eh? I'll fill your hands, you double... Sure, huh? Just a minute, boys. Got you both covered. Stay out of this shirt. Put away those irons, both of you. Ah, uh, you can't... Give me that gun. gun. I said no let's uh, Now, I'm at it. It's as much my fault as his, Sheriff. No, it isn't, Branch. I was standing across the street when Mike rode up. He was spoiling for trouble then. Tried to push a young kid around and got tripped up. That little ran a hand. I'm keeping his gun, Mike, till you sober up. In the meantime, get moving. You haven't got anything on me. I've served my time. You Mike, got... I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Just because you got out of jail, there's no reason to go on the prod. You still got a little spread east of here. Go home and cool off. When you can come to town without wanting to fight, nobody will stop you. All right, Lord Dog. You got the gun, so you're dealing. Next time, it might be different. You hear that, Potter? I'll be waiting for you, Mike. Anytime you come a gunning. Uh, get moving, Mike. I mean it. Uh... We're all fishing behind a lawman's back. I don't know if he was coming. Mike, wait a minute. Hey, what the? Who is it? I guess you don't remember me. I'm Sky Newell. Newell? I don't know anybody with a handle like that. <laughs> <laughs> what difference does it make? I'm foreman out at the Lazy S. I don't want any part of Branch Potter's ranch there. Now, wait. I heard your ruckus with the old man. There's no reason why you and I can't do business. What do you mean? You've been away from these parts for two years. Remember old man Potter's daughter? A girl named Sue? Yeah. What about her? I was figuring on marrying her. Being foreman of the Lazy S and all that. But she ran off and got hitched to a young Jasper named Phil Haynes. Now, listen, I don't care who she ran off. Haynes don't get along so well with Potter. He and Sue have a little rant the other side of the lazy ass. They're having a hard time. What do I care? Haynes has registered the figures 800 as his brand with the Cattlemen's Association. Lazy ass? 800. Get it? This loco talk don't make any sense to me. I'm going oh, to... Oh, get... Who was that? I don't know. Some cowpoke heading for home. Well, Mike, how about us getting together on that business deal? I still don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> hey, climb on your cayuse. We're right out of town a ways. I'll explain it. Steady, boy. Explain what? I got a bottle there in the saddlebag. Maybe that'll help you understand. Well, now, mister. Now you're talking sense. Lead off. Now, get up there, boy. Get up. Get up. Dan, I expected you right after sundown. Yeah, I know. Uh, steady, boy. There were a lot of people in the store, and I had to wait to buy the supplies. Uh, here they are. Good. Then a drunk fella tried to push me against the hitch rack, so I tripped him. What's that? Oh, I didn't hurt him. He got right up and went into the cafe. Oh, he and the foreman of the Lazy S Ranch came out while I was packing the saddlebag. Oh, is that so? They didn't see me, but I never heard such crazy talk in my life. What do you mean? The foreman kept telling the drunken fella, he called him Mike, that they ought to go into business together. Nothing wrong in that? No, I guess not. But I still don't see any connection between Lazy S and 800, do you? Well, not unless... Wait a minute. Lazy S Ranch belongs to Branch Potter. That's what they said. But I've never heard of the 800. It's the brand of a man who married Mr. Potter's daughter. The foreman said it was a little ranch that wasn't making very much money. Hmm. I guess it was just a lot of crazy talk. Maybe not, Dan. At least it's worth investigating. How? Here, Silver. We passed the Lazy S Ranch this afternoon before we made camp. You mean we'll ride back that way now? Here, Victor. Won't do any harm, steady, Silver. <laughs> Might do some good. Gee. Come on, Silver. Silver. Come on, Victor. In the meantime, Sky Newell and Mike Fallon reined up their horses near a large herd of steers bedded down on the lazy ass range. Hold there, hold there, boys. Here we are, Mike. 
be no trouble at all to cut out about a hundred heads. Yeah. But first, we got a little brand blotting job to do on two or three of those critters. Now, you're talking to a gent who's a real expert. You got to run an iron steady, boy. <coughs> sure. Right here in my saddle boot. But don't forget, we don't want any expert jobs, Savvy. Don't worry. You dab a loop onto one of the steers. I'll rustle some wood for a fire. Cattle over there on the slope. Steady. Must be the main herd of the lazy ass. Come on, Dan. We walk over that way and lead our horses. Sure. Steady, boy. <clears throat> Gee, it must be a wait, job. Dan. What's the matter? The wind just changed. I smell smoke. Golly. So do I. It smells like burning. Cowhide. Yes, I thought so. Somebody's branding cattle. Wouldn't they have to have a fire? There must friend? be a gully or a draw up ahead. Come on. There it is. Two men. They get the fire covered. They're only using one iron. Golly, those men look like the foreman and the other fellow I told you about. Are you sure, Dan? If I could sneak through this brush and get up to the edge of the gully, I could go get... ahead. All right. Be careful not to make any noise. I will. That's all. Good. Climb back up. Sure. Hey, Scott, you can come. Don't let these two get away. Wait a beach boy. I'm warning you. Here, Dan. Give me your hand. Yeah. Thanks. Scott, don't just tell me what'll happen if they get out here. Oh, my head. Quick, fix my head. That's the mistake you were warned about. Come on, Dan, quick. Not up, Steady yeah. Silver. Uh, hurry. Uh, golly, I'm sorry. It was I'm an accident. It. You couldn't help it. No, we'll never know who yes, it was. Yes, we will. I'll tell you my plan when we get back to camp. Come on, Silver. All right, Victor. morning when Branch Potter answered a knock on the kitchen door of the Lazy S Ranch House. Well, good morning, Shorty. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a job. <laughs> a job, eh? Now, don't tell me that a button like you is a full-fledged cowhand. No, sir, but there must be a lot of odd jobs I could do around a ranch like this. Hmm, I wouldn't be surprised. What's your name, son? Dan. Dan Reed. I'm Branch Potter. How about $15 a month plus room and grub sound, do you? Golly, you mean I'm hired? That depends on how good you are with an axe on that woodpile over there. Gee, thanks for the job. I'll prove how good I am. <laughs> Smart-looking youngster. Wouldn't surprise me. Oh, I won't have... oh. Scott, what's wrong with you? You look like you were heading for a funeral. Steady, boy. Got some bad news, Branch. Yeah? What is it? Rode over the West Range at Senate. Made a rough tally on the herd. Over a hundred head are missing. What? How could a hundred They must have been stolen. And like it's not whoever did Excuse it. Excuse me, Mr. Potter. You forgot to tell me where I can find the axe. What the? Who's this? New handyman. Just hired him. Handyman? Well, I... I mean, he... What are you trying to say, Sky? This... This kid. What about him? I don't know what he's told you. But I can prove he's a cattle rustler. <laughs> Curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Dan Reed didn't say a word when Sky Newell accused him of being a cattle rustler. He was following the Lone Ranger's instructions to confuse the foreman of the Lazy S. Cattle rustler? How could a young boy like Dan It's the truth. I saw him and a mask owl who'd right near our herd on the West Range last night. What were you doing out there? Why, yeah. I... Never mind. What were you doing out there, Sky? Well, one of the punches and I were hunting strays. We made a fire to heat some grub. Then we spotted this kid and his outlaw pod. They even shot at me. Look at my hand. Is that right, son? Part of it's right. See, he can't lie out of it. Now, this morning, a lot of stock is missing. Figure it out for yourself, Branch. Did you rustle any steers, Dan? No, I didn't, Mr. Potter. It's kind of hard to believe. Don't see how a kid like you... I just to... told you he had a partner, a big hombre, with a mask over his face. Maybe there were more, for all I know. There's a trail leading away from the main herd. That's plain enough. And we'll follow it. Call some of the boys out of the bunkhouse. Sure. Roll out, Capo. Roll out, get the weapon. I can't see any reason for Sky to accuse you of stealing beef, Dan, unless... Got anything more to say? Not now, Mr. Potter. But I'm as anxious as you are to see where that trail he's talking about leads. Hmm. Start with your bronc and ride along with us. Sure. Branch Potter, accompanied by his foreman, Sky Newell, and Dan Reed set out with the ranch hands for the place where the Lone Ranger and Dan had seen Mike Ballin with Sky branding the lazy ass cattle. As they rode along, Branch glanced from Dan to Sky. He trusted Dan fully. Yet, he couldn't believe that Sky, his own foreman, would actually rustle the lazy ass stock. Within a short time, they drew rein at a spot indicated by Sky Newell. Oh, 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 oh. Here's the place, Branch. See those hoof marks? Yeah. Stock was cut out of the main herd right here and moved along toward the west. Yeah. Yeah. Sure looks that way. Right down there in the draw is where I spotted the kid and his partner. He Wait a minute. Dan! Dan! Where's that boy who rode away from the ranch house with us? Oh, I ain't seen man. him. Played it off on his own about a mile back. Yeah. Yeah. Took him around out, huh? <laughs> yeah, I figured he would. Well, I didn't. I guess this is one time I guessed wrong. But we can still follow this trail. Sure, Branch. The only bad part is where it's going to lead you. What do you mean by that? Heading in this direction, there's only one place it can go. Over to the 800 spread where Sue and your son-in-law, Phil Haynes... You try to tell me my own family is stealing lazy-ass cattle? You didn't believe me when I told you about that kid, so... so I'll shut up. From now on, I'm not believing anything but my own eyes. Good. You and the boys head back for the ranch. I'll follow this trail alone. Anything you say, Branch. Yeah. All right, boys. All right. All right. All right. All right. In the meantime, Dan Reed, after dropping behind unnoticed, turned Victor off the trail and headed at a fast pace toward the Lone Ranger's camp to make his report. Time was precious, and he urged Victor forward at breakneck speed. Come on, Victor! A short time later, Dan sat at the camp, was soon pulling his sweating horse to a halt. Oh, Victor, oh, Victor, oh, Victor, oh, Victor. What happened, Dan? Everything worked out just as you thought it would. The foreman claimed he caught you and me stealing cattle. And what did Mr. Potter say? He wanted to go right out and see the proof that the foreman was talking about. On our ride over there, I dropped out of sight. Good. Did you find out where they took the cattle? Yes, I think so, Dan. The only strange part is why Mike and Skye did such a poor job of brand blotting. Gee, yeah. I'm sure that if we keep our eyes open and wait until tomorrow, we'll know the answer. Potter left the group of horsemen and rode on alone. He felt disgraced before the men over the fact that his own son-in-law was at the root of the rustling and had been discovered by Skye. The nearer he rode to the 800 spread, the more his anger mounted. Then, when he realized that Skye Newell was right, that the trail did lead to the 800 ranch, his anger knew no bounds. He pulled his horse to a halt in such a way that clearly showed his state of mind. Whoa! 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 You critter! sneaking, thieving stunts I've ever heard. And him, my own son-in-law. Why, hello, Mr. Potter. You're quite a stranger. Come on in. Oh, thanks. I'll do my talking right here. Well, what's wrong? Phil, I just found a couple of my steers grazing with your herd this side of the valley. What you do with the rest of them? 
A couple of... You must be joking. Dad, won't you come in and have some breakfast? No, thanks, Susan. I guess you have to eat with a cattle rustler, but I don't. Well, you're loco. Why should I steal any cattle? I'm not asking you why. All I want to know is what you did with the rest of them. Well, I don't know what you mean. Dad, it isn't like I saw the proof with my own eyes. Two steers with the worst job of brand blotting I've ever seen. Trying to change a lazy ass into an 800. If you saw anything like that, it's news to me. Maybe. You're Sue's husband. So I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and not ask any more questions. If it happens again, I won't wait to ask questions. So long, Sue. Well, I'll be dog. Bill, I don't understand. Neither do I, Sue. Your dad is really on the warpath. like I thought it would. Yeah? The old man followed the trail these critters made when we drove him past Bill Haynes' place last night. Did you find the steer? Sure he did. Told me all about it when he got back to the ranch. When he found two steers with blotted brands, he figured his son-in-law must have the rest of them hit up. <laughs> How long before I head for the border with these critters? <laughs> There's plenty of time. You might as well take twice this money. You mean use that third steer I branded? Why not? That'll convince the old man that Haynes is guilty. You get the cattle, and I settled an old score. That's all right with me. When do we do it? Tonight. Meet me at the same place at midnight. I'll be there. Good. Get out of there. Yeah. It was early the next morning when the foreman of the Lazy Ass Ranch made a startling announcement to his boss. Ranch, they've done it again. Who's done what? We're missing some more stock. Cut out of the main herd and driven off the same way. Oh, well, that dad burn. Maybe, Maybe too. Haines figures whatever's yours belongs to him, too. That's even you. Tell one of the boys to saddle my horse, guy. Sure. Want me to ride over there with you? All right. It's a job that's got to be done, and you might as well help. <laughs> I didn't think you were coming There's over here. There's that cattle rustling husband of yours. Now what's wrong? As if you didn't know. Are you Shut awake? Guy, I'll handle this. You tried the same trick again, Phil. It won't work. You don't make any more sense today than you did yesterday. I haven't stolen anything. You're lying. Even if you are Sue's father, it doesn't give you the right to come Why over here. Why don't you just turn him over to the law, boss? I'm my own law when it comes to cattle rustlers. By Juniper, I'm... Yes, going... please don't. Mr. Potter. What the... That kid rustler, boss. He and Haynes must be working in cahoots. How about it, Dan? Is that right? No, it isn't. But I know where you can find your stolen cattle. You? You do? You really know where they are? Yes, ma'am. What did I tell you? The kid, the mask armory, and Phil Haynes are working together. The smart thing to do is to call in the sheriff. Why don't you let me prove it? That's right, Dan. I don't know. You ran out on me the last time. They're not far from her. Here, let's ride over there. He's local. All right, Dan. Maybe you do know something about this. Lead off. We'll follow you. Sure. Let's go. This used to be Mike Vallon's ranch. It still is. Hey, there's Vallon. Running away from that shack. He's heading for his horse. I'll blow him full of holes. It's better to take him alive. He wasn't in this alone. Let me try to rope him. Come on, Victor. Don't let him get away, kid. If I can just get this rope swinging. Come on, clean it. Oh, golly. One side, Dad, I'll take him. Riding like the wind, the masked man rushed past Dan Reed. He closed in on Mike Vallon. His lariat swung overhead and then snaked out. Oh, back to him. Oh, oh, oh. Let it be oh, Victor, oh, boy, oh, boy. oh, golly, you sure roped him neat. Ben, don't you try that again. But I just wanted... Neither you nor Victor have learned how to brace yourselves after a successful toss. I wanted to get that rustler alive. I admire your courage, Dan, but don't do it again. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold that crew. He won't get away. Come here, Valen. Now listen to me. It's the same kid in the same mask, man. Wait a minute, Valen. I should have known that you'd be in on it if there was any rustling going You'll on. You'll see some of your stock over in that corral back of the house. I see it, Dad. I can see your brand on it. Why, Juniper, you're right. There must be some mistake here, Branch. What do you mean? I'm not blind. Double-crossing hyena. You framed me into this. I get back. I, I... 
Were you in on this deal? Uh, no, no. Yes, he was. Don't listen to a masked stranger, Frank. Yeah, and I saw them night before last. When they were blotting a lazy ass friend. You see, they purposely made a bad job of it. And then put those two steers with Phil Haynes' 800 stock. Make me think that Phil has stolen all of my stock. Of all the ornery tricks. Sky knew her, you'd Get your it. hands up, all of you. What? Oh. So, uh, that's the play, huh, Sky? You bet it is. That's as good as a confession. Maybe so. Move over here, Mike. Don't take that rope off. Here you are, Alan. It won't work, Sky. No. no. Stop yelling. You're not seriously hurt. Sky, you fat-headed fool. You've gone and proved the masked man's story. They'll both talk, Mr. Potter, when you turn them over to the law. Now, will you take over? I'll hold them. Come on, Dan. All right. All right. Wait a minute. Hey, Dan. Come on, Mr. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Dan, who are they? Blamed if I know, Sue. But I sure owe a lot to both of them. And I want to apologize to you, Phil. I'm just a hot-headed Oh, old no, no, you're not. It was a mistake, that's all. But, Dad, Phil, we still don't know who they are. From the way they're heading out, like as not, we never will know. Just a mighty smart kid and a man in a black mask. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>